Okay, this video talks about an application of a difference amplifier being used in an EKG machine. So for this um, to make any sense to you, you first have to read the PDF that's on PolyLearn that talks about this EKG example. So um, if you haven't read that, go ahead and read it and then come back to this video. But assuming you have read it, um, in that handout or in that example PDF, it talks about how the EKG waveform, uh, you know, the flip that will show that you have a proper heartbeat is equal to the difference of two voltages, where these voltages come from electrodes that are placed on a patient's chest. So, you know, we could call one of those voltages from one of the electrodes V2 and the other one V1, so it matches our notation that we used in our differential example equation. Now, also talked about in the uh, PDF example is that both these electrode voltages, in addition to the desired voltage that is needed to generate the um, EKG waveform, well, along with that is common noise um, that's picked up by the electrodes. And, you know, great uh, amount of caution is taken and effort is uh, done to make the electrodes as identical as possible so that this noise will be a common amount for both of the electrodes. So things like, um, you know, the electrode length of wire and just how the electrode itself is built is all try to, uh, you know, be made as, as identical as possible. But no matter uh, what steps are taken, you're always going to end up with some noise. So both electrodes are going to have uh, these noise signals that go along with the actual uh, desired signals, uh, V1 and V2. Now, we take th these voltages uh, from the electrodes and feed them in as inputs to our differential amplifier. And as we talked about, the output of a differential amplifier when the resistor values are picked appropriately, as again was discussed in a previous video, well the output of the differential amplifier is just going to be the ratio of these two resistors times the difference of the two input voltages. But you see here the input voltages, uh, again, it's not just simply V1 and V2 because you have this noise voltage also. But you see this is why a differential amplifier is good to use in a case like this because if we plug in to our expression our electrode voltages okay so V2 being you know V2 plus this noise voltage okay, and we're going to subtract from that um, V1 plus its noise voltage okay well, in the ideal case where the amount of noise picked up by each electrode is exactly the same because the electrodes are um, identical, well, you see those noise voltages would cancel out completely. And we would be left with the output only due to the desired input voltages well, the difference of the desired input voltages V1 and V2. Okay, so this is the perfect situation is that, um, you know, the noise signals of each electrode just completely cancel out and we're left with only amplifying the desired signal. Now, in reality, of course, you know, no matter how careful and how much effort is is taken to make the electrodes as identical as possible to keep these noise voltages the same there's always going to be some difference so <coughs> you know in an actual case like this uh, you know you'll get some output voltage due to the difference of the noise signal so there'll be some uh, effect on the output due to the undesired uh, noise signal and a measure of how good your actual differential amplifier is, is this measurement uh, called CMRR. Okay, and what this acronym stands for is that it stands for common, a okay, common mode, it's an M, common mode, re 
rejection. A common mode rejection ratio, which is just equal to the gain of the difference over the gain of the noise. And the difference here that we're talking about are the desired signals, the difference of V2 minus V1, okay, the actual um, difference of signals that we want to amplify. And noise, a noise, that's the undesired. So that's the gain of, uh, you know, the, the gain of the, um, you know, the undesired uh, signal that we wish we didn't have to amplify. You know, ideally, let's see if we write ideal here. Okay, ideally, the gain of the difference, right, the desired would be some number, and the gain of the noise would be zero, right, because they would completely cancel out. So you see the ideal CMRR would be infinity. So in a real case, you just want this ratio in this number for CMRR to be as large as possible. And it's not uncommon to have differential amplifiers where the CMRR is, you know, a couple hundred thousand or more. Uh, usually, though, uh, it's measured in dB, okay, which, which is a logarithmic scale. Uh, but this, for this course, non-majors, uh, I don't hold you to that. Um, that scale. You can just express your CMRR as a number and again just know in the ideal case that uh, it's an infinite value.